Hey there, welcome to the Movie Review Mom YouTube channel. If you are brand new to this channel, yay, you found me. I'm so glad I've been waiting for you. And if you are a returning subscriber, yay, thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. It helps spread magical YouTube fairy dust all over my channel. Anytime you like, subscribe, or even comment down below. And it allows more people to find my YouTube channel. So thank you. I really do appreciate it. All right. So my goal, as you know, is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can make the best decision as to whether or not you want to spend time or money or both sometimes watching a specific film. So today, the specific film I'm reviewing is called On Fire. This very dramatic movie is now playing in theaters. The film is rated PG-13, and it's an hour and 20 minutes long. My overall movie review mom grade is probably a B-. minus. So let me explain why. I'll give you an overview in a nutshell, and then I'll point out things I liked, things I didn't like, tips for parents, themes worth talking about, interesting lines, funny lines, if there are any, and recommendations for other films that are sort of similar that you might also enjoy. All right, so are you ready to dive in? Let's go. In a nutshell, the film was inspired by true events and is certainly timely as so many devastating fires have been destroying homes and cities across the globe. On Fire was written, directed, and produced by Nick Lyon. Peter Facinelli stars in it and also directed and produced the film. So let me give you some tips for parents straight up. I think young children are going to be frightened by the fire and the dangerous situation. So I would recommend it for very older children, maybe 11, 12 years old at the youngest. But again, you know your child best, but I'm just giving you the heads up. We do see people die. There is some profanity and one F-bomb. And of course, People and creatures are in perilous situations. We see the destruction of property and roads and uh, forests and you know homes and all that kind of stuff. All right, so some of the themes that are illustrated in the movie are talk of climate change. And so, of course, a teenager says, you know, oh, this is all happening because of climate change. And then his grandfather says, no, it's hot, it gets cold. You know, this is a cycle of life. And and then other than that, there's not a big uh, climate change discussion or attempt to really preach that. Just that this is a de devastating fire and it's happening and people need to survive. Uh, other themes are emergency preparedness, courage and family and thinking fast and clearly. So there were some things I liked about this movie. First of all, the cast does a really good job and includes, as I mentioned, Peter Facinelli, uh, Fiona Dourif, Asher Angel, Lance Henriksen, and Glenn Morshauer. I mean, there were others, of course, but those were the main characters. Cinematographer Philip Roy does a really great job capturing the beauty and the danger of the fire. Now, it's too bad that it takes an emergency before people think ahead and get prepared. Uh, whether you watch this movie or you've actually lived through an experience where there's been an evacuation or an emergency, you really need to be prepared and think ahead of those kinds of things. So what I highly recommend and have recommended and taught classes on for years is that everyone should keep an emergency backpack in each of your cars and one for each member of your family in your home, whether it's inside your home or in the garage someplace uh, so that you can be evacuated and have what you need. So inside each of the backpacks should be food, water, medicine, diapers, a change of clothes, a list of phone numbers, coins in case you get to a pay telephone if those exist anywhere, uh, flashlights with extra batteries, and other crucial items. So if you just go Google, quote, 72 hour kit or quote, emergency preparedness kit, you will see all kinds of websites and lists that you can follow and start including. And honestly, if you include everything on those lists, it's not gonna fit in one backpack. And so for my family, I have a rolling backpack 
and a carrying backpack because there's so much stuff that I want us to be able to take with us. They're often called 72 hour kits. And the idea behind that is that it takes generally 72 hours to get emergency uh, rescue services to your aid and that you're generally on your own for the first 72 hours. Now, in the case of this movie, they get help a lot sooner than that, but it's better to be prepared to have too much than not enough and actually need it, right? Now, I've done this for years and uh, it has definitely given me and my family peace of mind knowing that we, at a moment's notice, could evacuate and have some basic supplies that we would need. So out of all of the decades that I've been doing this, I've only needed to use it once, but I was so grateful that I had it. I was about 40 minutes away from my home in Georgia, where I lived at the time. And I was driving in a vehicle with my young baby. He was probably a year and a half old, maybe even less than that, maybe a year old. Anyway, we got stuck in a tornado zone. They started blasting the emergency on the uh, radio and uh, take cover, take cover. And I ended up finding shelter in a stranger's basement where several other people had actually gathered. And uh, we huddled down in safety. The power went out, but we were... Uh, you know, giving each other encouragement and becoming friends during this little crisis. And I was able to have diapers and food to make sure that my baby was okay uh, because it took several hours to get back home. Trees had fallen, roads were closed, and luckily cell phones existed back then. And so I called my husband and I said, okay, you know, help me get home because I wasn't that familiar with all of the streets. And so he got a map and he said, okay, turn left. And I'd turn left and then he'd say, okay, turn right. And then that street would be blocked because a tree had down. And so he'd say, okay, turn around, now do a different left and go down this street. Anyway, it took a while to navigate me back home. But the whole time, I knew my baby was going to be safe and have food and a clean diaper and all of that kind of stuff. So better safe than sorry. All right. So in the film, we actually see this feature family make both good and bad decisions. So if you're going to watch this movie with your family, with older children, talk about the things that they did right and wrong. Talk about what you would do in a similar situation and actually make an evacuation plan start gathering items and in, in backpacks or wherever, whatever you have, and then make a list of the things that you need to purchase so that you can have a complete kit just in case. The movie absolutely demonstrates how quickly a fire can spread and jump and change directions. So even if the news is saying, oh, it's over here, uh, you know, it could absolutely change paths. There was one time when I was living in Carlsbad, California, where we had fires coming from the north, from the south, and from the east. And we were getting boxed in. And if it got really severe, we were going to have to head to the ocean. That was the only safe path. And it was frightening and the air instantly filled with ash. And one of the things that we had were masks. And this was, you know, years before now everybody has spare masks everywhere. But, you know, the N95, the good strong one. So you're not breathing in all of that ash. But another item that I did not have at the time was chapstick. Because of all of the fires surrounding our house or our neighborhood, uh, the air became very dry and instantly all of us got chapped lips. And I thought, oh, that's such a simple thing. And so I quickly added those to my list or, you know, to my backpack so that we were ready. And luckily they were able to stop the fires. So the closest fire was less than a mile. And it was, it was really frightening. Anyway, at the end of this movie, we see words on the screen that tell us how many millions of acres all over the world are destroyed by fire, affecting the lives of humans, animals, and plant life. We also see words of gratitude written on the screen, thanking all of the men and women, the firefighters, the rescue workers who risk their lives trying to save others. And I thought that that was a very nice touch.
Now, with all of that praise, there really were just a couple of things that I didn't like or thought could have been done better. For example, some of the CGI doesn't look very real, mostly at the very beginning of the movie. And then during the movie, it does look pretty well real. There's smoke and flames and that all seemed legit, and I don't know how they made that movie to look like that. If it, if it were CGI, then they did a really great job throughout the rest of the movie. And then other than just caring for the well-being of other human beings, even if they're fictional in a movie, we don't really get to learn that much about the family, enough to truly become endeared to them and really care about them in the movie. You know what I mean? Um, it just, the, the flame started instantly. And so there wasn't a whole lot of time to really, you know, just want to cry if somebody died. And we do see some deaths, um, but you're kind of like, well, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I would have somehow been able to explore more of that. Now there are a few calm moments where they're, the characters are talking and you're getting to know them a little bit, but just not that much. And the movie is actually pretty short too. So, you know, they have to navigate a few things and then all of a sudden they're rescued. At least it felt like it went by really fast. Now, I always take notes when I write movies, especially I write down funny lines and interesting lines simply so I can share them with you. So you get a a taste and feel for the dialogue and the script writing. Uh, I did not write down any funny lines because the movie is kind of serious. I mean, they're running for their lives for most of the movie. Uh, there were a few little situational moments, but other than that, it's pretty much a drama. But for interesting lines, I wrote down a couple of them and I have them all on my written movie review at moviereviewmom.com. So you can always go over there as well. So the first line is between the grandfather and the grandson. And the grandfather's like, I'm staying, I'm not going. And they're like, you've got to go. And so finally they convince him with the promise of a pack of cigarettes. So he's in the car, you know, stuff happens. And um, now his, his grandson says, oh, you don't want to die. And the grandfather says, says who? You know, he's starting to just second guess, like, do I really want to go through all of this? Do I really want to live? And I thought that that was interesting. And then another conversation is when, you know, all this stuff is happening and the um, the father says, you know, what do we do now? We wait. And the wife says, we pray. Now, this is not a religious movie at all. And you don't really get the impression that this family is overly religious. But I think it's human nature in a disaster when faced with life and death situations that we do reach out and pray to a God that we maybe didn't even fully realize we believed in. Anyway, so it's kind of that type of a situation. All right, so let me give you recommendations for three movies I instantly thought of as I was watching this one. The first one is called Backdraft. Now, I've seen this movie so many times because when my boys were growing up, we watched this and we all kind of got sucked into it. And that movie does an excellent job really drawing you in to these characters. You really root for them and the movie features firefighters but there's a lot of action lots of fire and then also some dramatic moments with the emotional relationships and all of that anyway I can't remember exactly what rating it was um, but uh, I do remember having to fast forward a, a little intimate moment and so it might be rated or I can't remember even the language we also back then used devices that bleeped out all of the F-bombs and the profanity and you could also um, clean things, filter out a bunch of stuff. Anyway, so maybe my memory is that it's a sanitized uh, movie and it might be a little rougher than I remember. But anyway, the next movie is called Ladder 49. It also is a film about firefighters and it is... Um, heartbreaking there you know you see the action the fire the per personal relationships and actually as I'm saying this that's describing the other movie 
the third one that I want to recommend, which is called Only the Brave. And it that one is based on a true story. And it is just heartbreaking and touching and such a tribute to these firefighters. All of them are actually for the courage that they exhibit when the rest of us are fleeing from the fire, they're going towards it and fighting. So if you're a firefighter watching this, thank you so much. We really do appreciate it and recognize your sacrifices and your courage. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope that my reviews help you decide and how you want to spend your time, which movies you want to watch. And when you get a minute, run over to my Facebook group called Movie Review Mom. We have lots of fun sharing goofy movie-related memes and have conversations. And of course, I'll post when my movie reviews go up so that you're the first ones to know as well. Uh, of course, if you subscribe, you're really the first ones to know. Anyway, have a fantastic day. Be safe out there, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.